Hello friends, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. In today's video, I'll be talking about what I consider the most important skill in editing. Now I'm in Luminar Neo and I'm going to be walking through an edit and showing you how I do it now versus how I used to do it. So let's get into it. Here I am in Luminar Neo with this photo and it started like that. I did a little bit in Develop Raw. I did a little bit in Super Contrast and of course I cropped it. So I balanced the light. I brought up the color a little bit but I just want to be careful. I never do a lot in Develop Raw with color. I like to save that for other color tools and I want to be a bit more specific. We're going to be talking about that quite a bit in this video. So anyway, my photo started like that and it gets now to be like that. Well, here's the thing. Looking at a photo like this, I might want to bring up the white and the white caps. I want to bring up the color in the sky and maybe over here in the water, but I don't really want to mess up anything that might be white. So if you come in and maybe lift the exposure a little bit, that, that helps the white caps, but it also lifts everything else. If you lift the highlights, it's also lifting some of the uh, color, or excuse me, the light values in the sky, and the same with the whites, right? So if you lift the whites, it is impacting those white caps a lot, but as you can see, it's also kind of messing up the sky. Now conversely, if you want to play with color, maybe you want to add some golden hour, you can drag that across and you start getting a nice warm tones everywhere, but I think it throws off the colors here in the foreground, which makes it look not that great. So what we're going to talk about here is masking and masking is what I consider the most important and frankly powerful skill in editing. If you want to get great results when you're done with your edits, I really think that you have to learn how to mask. My first few years uh, when I was learning photography and photo editing, I didn't really understand masking and I didn't really do very much. And when it kind of my eyes were opened to masking and I started really learn how to do it, my world changed. Honestly, my photos got better. My edits got a lot better. I really started to understand how to control a photo edit. And that's what masking is. It's all about control. Now I'm building a masking masterclass for Luminar Neo. I'm going to have that available in a few weeks on my website. If you would like to learn more about it and stay up to date, you can join my newsletter down below. This is not a masterclass that's going to be on YouTube. It's only going to be available through my website. But let me show you what I would do just as an example here. I've already used develop raw. So now I can use develop again. And in this case, I want to come over here and I want to get a mask and I'm going to get a linear gradient. And I want to slightly brighten this area over here because what I want to do is basically lift uh, some of the tones here because it's a little bit dark, but also I want to pop those whites and control that. So a slight bump in exposure, slight bump in highlights, a slight bump in whites, and those white caps coming in and crashing on the beach just look a lot better. There it is before, and there it is now, plus that area is a little bit brighter, which I think helps. Now, another thing I like to do is bring up some of the colors in the sky. So I'm going to get develop again. I'm going to get mask and a linear gradient again, and I'm going to drag this gradient with a nice kind of generous gradient zone. That's the area between these two lines. And I talk a lot about that in this class, but that's the area of transition. And what I want to do here is basically I want to give it a bit of a tint. I want to give it some saturation. I want to give it some vibrance. I want to give that a little bit of umph in the sky because I just think it looks a little bit better if it's a little bit more saturated. I do like my colors. I can't help that, but if you look at the before and after, it's honestly not a massive change. And in fact, I could probably stand to do a little more. Just be careful. You don't want to go over the top because then the colors kind of get out of whack. But it's, it's a nice little bump, I think. And I might even go a little bit warmer and maybe a tiny bit more tint. But the bottom line is I isolated that into the sky because that's where I want it to go. But the other thing I want to do is bring some of those tones uh, to be a little bit more kind of sunset-y. That's where toning comes in. And again, masking and linear gradient. If you haven't figured it out, I use linear gradients a lot because they're really powerful. And even though it's kind of a, a straight line, it covers a wide portion of the photo and the ability to tilt like in this one or to move them around and reposition just really gives you a lot of power and control. So I'm going to go into the adjustments and in the highlights, I'm going to go ahead and bump this up, give it a little bit more red. You can see that's kind of uh, getting a little bit more of that pink kind of color into the sky. If you look at the before, a lot more blue and the current state, a lot more pink. Now, if I didn't mask that, what would be happening is because I'm in highlights, it would be turning these white caps a bit of that pink color, which I do not want. I want to keep them kind of white because they're closer. They're further away from the light. And I want to have that feeling, if you will, of them crashing on the beach. And uh, I think people expect crashing waves to look kind of white. 
So I think that looks good. And maybe what I want to do is also pop this sunlight over here a little bit. So I'm going to go into develop and hey, guess what? Masking again and a radial gradient. And I'm going to drag it like that and invert it. And what I want to do is collapse that to make it kind of thin and uh, stretch that out a little bit. Maybe not that thin, maybe something like that. And I recommend that you take your time, but you can take radial masks like this and scoot them to the edge, which is kind of handy. And what I want to do here is bump up the exposure a little bit. So I'm just creating a little bit more of that kind of hazy sun look there. And I'm going to bump up the temperature a slight amount and a slight bump in tint as well. And you just can't do this kind of thing without a mask because a bump in temperature and tint and exposure without a mask impacts the entire photo. And I don't want the entire photo impacted with that. I just wanted that little area there. So there it is before and there it is now. I'm going to close that. One other thing I might want to do here is just a quick, tiny little linear gradient just over here in the corner. Because what I want to do is not have the viewer waste any time kind of looking at that corner and a way to kind of mask, no pun intended, to mask an area or to kind of uh, make it disinteresting or uninteresting is to make it darker or less colorful. And so I'm going to darken this. Now I don't want to go too much and have it really visible, but I want to darken it a little bit. And if you notice my gradient, I made it kind of wide. I like to have that gradient zone because it really helps you fade your adjustment into the rest of the photo. So it doesn't look like a big massive difference between uh, what was there before and what you did. So this is a gentle little corner adjustment from there to there that just kind of gives you a little bit of darkness there. And it kind of frames, I think, the edge of the surf with those people walking. And last thing I want to do, if I come in here with Golden Hour and start popping that, and it looks great. I love Golden Hour, but I'm not a fan of applying it generously across an entire photo. Once again, I'll come in with a gradient, a linear gradient this time, and I might fade it into that surf a little bit. You can see I've got a really wide gradient zone. That's your transition or your fade area. And I might do something about like that and just give this a little bump. And so it hits this bit of water, hits a little bit along the edge of the surf. Of course, it's hitting the sky and that sort of thing. But if you maybe a little too much there, I'll take that down a little bit. But if you look at the before, and the after, got a nice little pop of warmth in the sky to kind of accentuate that sunset. And I was able to take the photo from that to that with a couple of minutes of editing, a few different masks applied kind of generously but carefully. And my end result is something much better than I could do if I did not know how to use the masking tools in Luminar Neo. You can see just a massive, massive difference in the photo. And one of the key differences is I was in control. And I was in control because I learned how to use masking and I take advantage of the power of that to isolate and be specific and targeted with my edits. That's what masking is all about. And that's what I'll be covering in my masking masterclass. So again, check out my newsletter, join. I'll be uh, announcing that as it gets closer, but lots of detail coming. It's, it's going to be a very deep and detailed class. And I, I know you're going to get a lot out of it. Anyway, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. I'll be back soon with more videos. And until then, my friends, you guys take care and adios.